Hey guys, it's Matt. Um, the Staples office supply down here is closing. I, did, I went in for something. I didn't know it was closing in a few weeks. Everything was 30% off. My mic that I typically use to make these sort of recordings was terrible. It was always like low. I grabbed this. It seems great so far. I hope you agree. Uh, let me know if it sounds clear. I have to turn the the gain down or whatever, the, the volume, but it seems, it seems perfect. So... Um, I'm impressed. Something actually works. <laughs> so, something actually worked normally. I plugged it in. It worked. I didn't have to configure my Mac for an hour. Incredible. Uh, guys, the half page, I'm sh pretty sure, will be delivered on Tuesday uh, instead of a final book chapter, which well, I guess you could call this the final chapter. It will be the last part of the book. Um, I reworked a bit of it yesterday. It needs a little bit of tweaking, but it pretty much will be ready to go. It's about three pages. I can still call it a half page if it's that short. There's a lead up to it. The whole video will probably be an hour, even though I'm still calling it the half page. The meat of it um, is is really no more than three pages. So it'll be all of reality, <laughs> all of reality boiled down to three pages. And I'm not struggling to do this. It's not some gimmick or anything. It, it is this simple. Well, Matt, when you can't figure it out and you're too stupid, it comes down to three pages. Think what you want. I, I, I think it is. I think it is this simple. At least for not everybody here is the same. All right. For at least for for some of us, uh, it is this simple. Once you can see through everything. But I am going to talk about. Uh, people have asked me why. You know, when I, I did allude to why I was forced to watch the Oscars because of the electricity that went out. Uh, my stepfather's house. My mother's house. They came up here, and uh, she said, I'm not watching this NASCAR. What is this race? Uh, okay, Mom, I'm here. You know, I'm here to do whatever you'd like me to do until you get your electricity back. They're across the street from it. It's called the Devro uh, School for. It used to be for autistic children, but now it's for the element. You know, the, these kids are. They have issues and some problems, and there's been some break-ins across the street and. Put it this way, the, the, the point is the electric company works very hard to make sure their electricity is not out for very long. You don't want the Devro school without electricity. So they're always restored very quickly. I knew, I knew it wouldn't be that long, although it was longer than I thought. A big tree went through the line. And anyway, so, and so they remind me, um, it's Oscar night. Oh, no. It's a, Okay. I, and I thought for for a second, I was like, no. But then immediately I thought, you know, I haven't done this. I haven't watched more than little snippets, of course. Like, was it the Will Smith slap last year? I mean, I haven't watched the Oscars or even more than five minutes at a time for 12 years or something like that. Or 10 to 12 years. It goes back to the story I told you about when I was sitting there, four or five beers in me, just ripping and, and you know, it was getting a little boisterous, and Missy was there, and she, you know, she, I said, I don't, I don't like the side of you. I don't, I don't know where this came from. <laughs> I was like, look at that schmuck. Uh, okay, so I, I wanted to do that again with, with my mother and stepfather, but of course, I bit my tongue. I did tell them, I did have to I, halfway through. I had to do it. I said, do you guys know what the Oscar is? Like it's so big, and so we, we, I, I told them it was the, it was the golden phallus of Osiris. And my stepfather, was, it, it was, I, I did it in a way, pr presented, um, he's pretty well, well read, well, well versed, you could say, you know, to John, tell me about Hobbes Leviathan, and he'll know something about it. So, I mean, he, he, he I presented in such a way with the history of it, of the whole Egyptian myth about Osiris, with the 13 parts, the, 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 the I guess, did the, the dick, the dick went missing, was eaten by a fish, in the Nile, ew, ew, and then it was re recrafted by ISIS. Um, Bill Clinton's is pause is to be a golden phallus, and I even said, I said, look at the head on that thing. I, my mom doesn't want to ever buy any conspiracy, what she would call conspiracy that I put forth. Just doesn't want to hear any of it. Will reject all of it. My, it, it was presented in such a way that my stepfather was like, he didn't want to admit it either, but he's like, that, that's probably right. So anyway, I got that out. I didn't. I didn't get to say uh, too much else, and I mostly. I mostly bit my tongue. My mother likes to have seen several of the movies up for Best Picture before the Oscars, so she went out and bought Killers of the Flower Moon and Oppenheimer, and she can get them through the television. She doesn't understand how to do that. She still doesn't understand how to rent 
<laughs> a movie through the smart television. Although John upstairs has Netflix. I, I don't know. She, she buys them. She doesn't buy that many. Just a few, maybe before the Oscars. Of course, I'm the benefactor of this. Uh, I get Oppenheimer. She says, want to see this? Yes, sure. Give me the Blu-ray and, and Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, I want to talk to you about Killers of the Flower Moon and what that was meant to do. Uh, or to pi Basically, the whole movie is about, in my opinion, piling on to white people which I don't know, you, you walk on eggshells on this platform, I don't know when I'm going to get a banner ad, what I'm going to be able to say. The white, I'm a white man, bot. I think I'm allowed to say that, but maybe it's kind of funny. For the purposes of this video, we're going to call somebody like me, people like me, the snowman. So the purpose of Killers of the Flower Moon was to pile on the snowman, as is the theme of everything for the last 10 to 15 years. So I want to talk about that. But just quickly on Oppenheimer, um, the score or the orchestra or, or the music underneath almost every scene in Oppenheimer carries the movie. Now, the movie's good. Okay, I'm not, I don't want to get into what's real, what's not. Guys, we're just not going to do that constantly uh, anymore. We, we understand, most people understand my position on things, how the world works, what is legitimate, what is not. I, I don't need to, I'm not going to. No, Matt, you don't do the sidebar, but you apologize for not for doing the sidebar for, or for not doing the sidebar. Okay, I'm going to stop apologizing for that, too. So it doesn't matter what about Oppenheimer was real when we do certain types of videos. We'll do when the video is about whether nuclear weapons are legitimate. That's what that video is about. So um, every scene has an orchestra behind it. And if you take the it's kind of like if you take the laugh track away from friends, there's nothing in the scene. It's not funny. Um, but laugh, laugh track, we were just, I don't even know if they even do it anymore in a lot of shows. I, I don't watch regular television, but if you're, I'm over 50, you just, laugh track was in everything. It was just, you grew up on it. At two, three, four years old, you're in a room with a television and everything from I Love Lucy has a laugh track. Hogan's Heroes, it's, it's all laugh track. So it's, it's just, you, you just become so used to it, um, where it would seem so strange probably if you came in from the outside and weren't used to it, and then everything had laughter. It seems almost weird now when I go back and watch uh, Friends or something, and it's just laugh, fake laugh track <laughs> put on top of everything. But this is the same way with Oppenheimer, with the score. You take the music out of... The music's behind every scene. Take the music out, and some, 20 scenes are just boring and horrible. So during the Oscars, I'm, I'm sitting there with my mother and my stepfather, best score or, or c composition or whatever, and I just yell out, Oppenheimer. It's got to be Oppenheimer. And I knew nothing about the other nominees. I just, you know, this has got to be Oppenheimer. Because whoever, they knew that that movie was carried by the score. Anyway, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, is that what it's called? Um, look, it, it's almost like, it's almost like worth seeing. It's probably, in a way, historically accurate. At least how, um, just another example of how an Indian uh, tribe or a reservation or um, Native Americans or American Indians on their own desi designated, federally designated land get, screw over, get screwed over by the snowman. I'm not saying that, of course the snowman has a 150-year history of screwing over the Native American. Of course, I'm not. But I'm just saying it's, it's, it's just Hollywood and the powers that be on the not Nilk and the minions of the not Nilk, the, the, the theme of the last 15 years is to really pile on the snowman. Of course, everybody everybody knows this. Every movie is out to make people like me look bad, and you know it's just it's part of how there. It's a ten um, ten phases of tactic and strategy as to how they're trying to introduce as much racism as possible uh, into society. Um, of course, they are through create creating camps, and I mean I, I don't know. Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit later. But one of the tactics is to remind people constantly for 10 to 15 years how horrible the snowman is or my ancestors are and were. That is the purpose of Killers of the, Killer of the Flower Moon. That doesn't mean it's not historically accurate. Well, Matt, what are you saying? That the snowman didn't come in there and try to take the money that was found on there? They, they, they come, I'm not going to say any more if you want to see it. They, they uh, find oil. Um, it's basically 
a Native American version of the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> to a degree. I think they even say, do they even say Texas tea? No, they say black gold. I was waiting for the Texas tea part. They say black gold. He's he not going to say Texas tea and make this a Native American version of the Beverly Hillbillies, are they? No. But but it's like that that theme. All this money starts to come to, into the Osage Native American reservation. And of course, and, and it, I'm sure, of course, uh, hundreds of thousands of unscrupulous, nasty people would try to get in there and steal the money or take the money or marry a Native American woman to get the money that way. A lot of that goes on in Killers of the Flower Moon. So I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying, even if every bit of it is historically accurate, how, again, another story of Native Americans being screwed over by by the powers that be. Well, at that time in the 1920s, it's post-World War I, you see Leonardo DiCaprio da Vinci come back from World War I. So it's sometime in the mid-20s. I don't know if they ever say exactly when it is. Of course, the, the powers that be was the snowman. Of course, that's the unscrupulous, nasty characters that are going to get in there and try to steal the money and, and screw over the Native Americans. So yeah, it's probably historically accurate. But you know that is the theme of Hollywood and the powers that be and their multifaceted approach to create as much racism as possible under the guise of trying to fix it. That's the funniest thing of all. It's, all. it's so obvious to us under the guise of trying to fix it and try to, we want to celebrate this, but every time you segment somebody, every time you celebrate it or point it out, you're creating more of it. It's first grade psycho psychological tactic that, well, we see it again, nobody else does. So that was the purpose of Martin Scorsese's Killer of Flower Moon. I'll get off in a second, but it's worth seeing. It's almost like you have to see it. It gives you an idea of how an Indian uh, nation manages its, its reservation and uh, deals with outsiders. And, it, you know, the, uh, actually, it is a modern day or a, a slightly more sophisticated soap opera, but Yellowstone does that as well. Uh, Yellowstone is just the bold and the beautiful and the young and the restless with some Kevin Costner and some polish and a few million, million more dollars a season or an episode. But it shows you, there, there's a segment about the, the reservation and the Indian uh, nations, uh, that the Native American nations they live amongst. That's pretty accurate. It is the, the tribal council, the tribal elders, how legally autonomous they are versus when the feds can come in or whose jurisdiction is what. Yellowstone does a good job of that as well. If you can put up with a brother and sister fighting with each other and backstabbing each other and the sex and the stupid stuff. I watched, I guess I watched most of it because what the hell else is there to watch? I mean, I, I was going to say, you can only watch so many re reruns of Hogan's Heroes. But what's really strange about that is I've been watching reruns of Hogan's Heroes on and off for 30 some years and I don't think I've ever seen the same episode twice. Like, how many seasons of this are there? How much of Hogan's Heroes did they do? I don't think I've ever seen the same one go over. Well, I guess I would forget if it was 25 years ago. But there's a lot of episodes. Put it that way. So, Killers of the, Killers of the Flower Moon just piling on the snowman. And it's like the snowman, you know, in this entire century, it's the snowman. It's like people, people like me, Kevin Bacon, and you know, trying to pledge the Omega House. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Well, I'm not. We're not. I'm not thanking anybody for it. Most of the most most people like me do thank. Oh, oh yes. We need to atone for, for the sins of our. Come on, come on, come on, sir. Oh, you have. It's worth seeing for a lot of reasons. You have to see it, but it's painful. It's long. It's and there's no protagonist. There's nobody likable. Even Leonardo DiCaprio, sometimes he does some, he, he, you can see he wants to do some good, but then he's serving the bad, and he's playing both, he does some very evil things, he's not likable, Robert De Niro uh, is not, nobody's likable. It's like, how do you have a movie three hours plus where there's nobody to even root for? So, you know, there'll be all these, um, all these um, movie reviewers that try to, they make their little movies and little videos trying to tell Disney what they're doing wrong, like Disney has no idea the basic formulas in Hollywood that have worked for a hundred years. They have no idea. The, these, these, um, these dummies, these movie reviewers from, um, I mean, look, I, I, from the critical drinker to yellow flash, to Disparo, to, um, Captain Midnight. Um, I, I give Dave a pass. Like I've said, I give just a guy 
a pass. I give Dave more of a pass. Uh, just a guy. He's he's he hasn't his subs haven't gone up much because he's doing things a little bit differently. But sometimes he's missing a little bit too. Uh, Dave, uh, you get the feeling with Dave, the movie reviewer, he could say a lot more. He knows more, but why confuse his audience? He's there to review shows, not to just completely jump into conspiracy. So um, they'll make these videos telling Disney how to do better, and then all these they'll probably tell uh, Martin Scorsese how he can do better, like he didn't know exactly what he was doing in serving the knot milk. I mean, that's if you're trying to make the snowman, the, the subconscious or unconscious theme is to make the snowman and my, you know, my race look bad, um, you don't put anything likable in the movie. It, the whole movie is a sour, ugly taste. You don't make one character the protagonist or you don't put anything positive in if the goal of the movie is to disparage the snowman. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, I don't know what I can talk about. I don't want even want a batter at. I don't know. Is it might be funny to just to constantly for the next however long this channel exists call me the snowman I, or you if you're like me. I you know it's I don't know. I, I don't know what I can say. It's you constantly walk on eggshells. A few more things about the Oscars before other topics. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel was the host. Guys, if there was a list of people. If I had to produce a list right now of 10 people that have to know somebody, that have to be related to somebody, that have pictures, uh, the Brutus pictures on somebody, or they're a, a bloodline, or they're a Rothschild, or a Vanderbilt, or a Rockefeller, or a Harriman, or a, Jimmy Kimmel is one of these people. It doesn't make sense to me. In other words, put a scale up. Whatever fame, wealth, status, and celebrity has been achieved is not commensurate with the product he puts out in front of a camera. I could see if he was a master of ceremonies at a bingo club or something like that or or uh, whatever, the local uh, Moose Lodge or something. Okay, fine. I could, uh, But okay, this guy keeps coming back around. Two years ago, there was the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. It was a, uh, it's not a, it's not like a Yoshinoya beef bowl. It's a football bowl game for college kids. He had his own bowl game. When he, when he started, he just started popping up everywhere. He's got to know somebody, guys. He's got to be related to somebody. He's just not that good. Okay, he can be kind of funny, but to the level of fame and for how long it's been going on, is he just used as a product of stalled century and his purpose is just to continue to facilitate stalled century? I don't think so. He's got to know somebody. I mean, he started popping up everywhere 20-some 20, 20 years ago. He did little comedy skits on Fox NFL. But then at some point he was interviewed. It was at the halftime of Monday Night Football. This goes back almost 20 years. He was blatantly drunk. Now, I don't know if I'm not, I don't think I'm confusing him with Namath. I think he was blatantly drunk too. But he embarrassed himself. It, that would have been the end of his career. Maybe somebody screaming at me, yelling at me, saying that, Matt, for a day, that was the end of his career. Until his grandpa. Uh, Rockefeller, Grandpa Harriman, Rothschild, Vanderbilt, Morgan, or whatever, made a call. Maybe. It, may, it, it could be that simple with somebody like J Jimmy Kimmel, guys. He's like, this guy was drunk. Get rid of him. We don't want him anymore here. We don't want him. Oh, the, what, the bat phone? The, the glowing bat phone is ringing? Oh, that, that only comes from the old money, right? Oh, no. Well, we have to take it. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. I, you know, you can't say, I want to I want to say the word that starts with R-O-T-H. You can't even say it because you literally get a banner ad if you talk about this family. So we'll do the Vanderbilts. We'll do the Harrimans. Does it, does it matter? The, the Morgans. If you talk, if you talk Roth, if you talk David Lee Roth, you get a banner ad. Do you, what, how did the, where did we, how did we get here? How did the world get to this level? So, uh, oh, Mr. Mr. Vanderbilt? A Cornel Cornelius Vanderbilt V? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel's your what? Uh, your nephew? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you, I, I did fire him, sir. I, I'm to restore him <laughs> on, mo on Monday morning, apologize publicly, and what? An extra $100,000 an episode? Uh, right away, Mr. Mr. Vanderbilt. Is it that simple? I don't, I don't have any other explanation for, for the likes of Jimmy Kimmel. Now, who else would be on your list, madam? Keanu Reeves would be on that list, but he's an acquired taste. You know, we've kind of learned to like his bad acting. He's likable. He's very, it's like Schwarzenegger in that 20-year period where he wasn't a good actor either. Although, 
Although, you know, in certain things he can be, he, can, he could be very good. But he's that, it was likable. The style became kind of likable. Keanu Reeves is like that. I mean, uh, point break. I mean, you mad? He does, uh, Gary, Gary Busey, you mad? Feels good. Feels good, doesn't it? Let's go out there and get these guys. I mean, it's horrible. That might have been better. Then go watch that scene where they're up looking over the Hollywood Hills. But he's, it's, it's like an acquired taste. We like... Whatever he carried forth, and he's pretty decent in The Matrix. Okay. He seems like, even from his first role, um, it made no sense in Dangerous Liaisons. They bring him in as some 16-year-old kid that obviously couldn't act. They could have gotten anybody to play that role. It was the Senor Dosene wooing Uma Thurman. I mean, he was horrible. He, it was not believable that that was a, a young man from the uh, 18th century. Not believable at all. He has that same Bill and Ted accent. He must know somebody. Anyway, we could, Matt, do, let's do a whole video. Who knows? Who, we'll do a whole video on this sometime. Um, and I, I can't really think of too many right now, um, but, but if I sat for 20 minutes and put the list together, um, absolutely, they have to be related to. To me, they're related to the old money. Um, it's not a super conspiracy, dark, floating Baphomet thing. It's just, the, you know, the old money of the Gilded Age, you know, that's what controls everything, in my opinion. That is what, you know, half of the Vanguard funds are. That's, where, you know, the, Ma 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 the Magellan Fund in, why is it called the Magellan Fund, right? Fidelity Magellan Fund for 15 years was, a, was the largest mutual fund in the world. I think Vanguard in many respects has overtaken them. But these giant mutual funds that slosh around two, three, four hundred billion dollars a day, that's where all the old money is Park, the Gilded Age money. Uh, but my friend Tony, he might be watching. Hi, Tony. If you're, um, he would just tell me, Matt, the, you know, that, it's not, it's not always a conspiracy. See, the heirs didn't know how to manage the money. Haven't you seen the first episode of the new The Gentleman? See, the heirs, all, they all, pit, Vanderbilt, Harriman, Morgan, Rothschild, Rockefeller, they all just, they pissed it away, Matt. They didn't know how to manage the money like the John Rockefeller and the Carnegie and the original ones. Matt, don't, don't you know that? Um, well, see, they didn't, Tony, they didn't have to manage the money. All they had to do was put it into savings accounts all over the world. They didn't have to even invest in anything. They didn't have to be on the right trend or ride the right wave. If they just put it in savings accounts, meaning government treasuries, bonds, whatever, they would all, the net worth of all of them would be over a trillion I know we've talked about this in the past, but it's one of the most fascinating topics of all time. They would all be worth over a trillion, all the old money of the Gilded Age, if they literally just put their net worth equivalent of a, the Gilded Age is 1875, say, through 1900 or 1905. They just put it in savings accounts or basic um, stocks or just uh, taking the dividend or, or whatever, the stock splits and just reinvesting. They'd be worth trillions. But when Forbes and Fortune show you the list of who's the richest, it's all new money. It's an absolute joke. I don't know how people can't see this. My friend Tony would still tell me, no, Matt, the heirs just, they just don't know how to manage it. Is that why all the heirs of Sam Walton and, and Walmart just sitting on that are worth, well, 20 to 100 billion each? Multiple heirs are worth 20 to 100 billion, or something like that, four, five, six heirs. They didn't get in there and try to change all the underwear in Walmart stores to magenta. That Maybe they did, actually, but they didn't get in there and try to micromanage the cowboys like Jerry Jones. They just, the, the heirs of Sam Walton just basically sat back, and I don't know, they play croquet in the backyard or something. That's all Vanderbilt, Harriman, Morgan, Rothschild, Rockefeller. Not to be, whatever they tell you, I think the last time I looked, the I did a video, and I need to do another video, and it's just so, it's one of the ways reality exposes itself. Not like reality glitch, but the whole fraud of this reality is so exposed in the ridiculous story as to how the old money went away. They'll tell you, the Rockefellers, I think, they'll tell you, the total net worth of Rockefeller family, Forbes or Fortune will say under 25 or 30 billion. When I looked, they said 11 billion, but that was about 10 years ago. They'll tell you that... Um, a little coder, Zuck the Borg, can come in and just, just by writing a check and just buy up everything Rockefeller owns because they're just worth about a tenth <laughs> or a fifth of what Zuck the Borg... 
the Rockefellers. It's so funny. The Rockefellers are worth a fifth or a tenth of what Zuck the Borg. Just a guy on a compu- computer that created an app. Or, I mean, come on. Who could possibly believe that? Who could, all they had to do was they established their wealth and they just do nothing. They just put it in savings accounts or let it or let it reinvest dividends and hold. Uh, come on. And they didn't, by the way, yeah, the Rockefellers, it was the original J.D. Rockefeller was oil, right? Standard oil, which was broken up into Texaco, Chevron, Mobil, Exxon, every single major oil company you know of, including refineries like Marathon Oil Refinery. It was all part of Standard Oil. So when the trust busters working for you, the, the, the trust busters working for the American public came in and busted up Standard Oil, like um, John D. Rockefeller that controlled all the politicians at the time, he didn't get any piece of it. He, he, maybe they did break it up. Of course they did. But when they broke it up, they broke it up. They broke up into a little piece that would become a tiny little thing in the future called Exxon. They broke it up into Mobile and Texaco, Chevron. He, they broke it up, sure, but half of it he owned. The other half was given, uh, there was a public offering at some time, became stock and mutual funds. But he still owns his half or whatever. That by itself uh, makes the Rockefellers, if they just do nothing, after the break, if they do nothing after the breakup of Standard Oil, they just go in the backyard and play croquet. I did that like Chris. Chris, remember Chris H. with Allison? Remember? He says, what happened behind me? I kept a little bit of that in so you could see what happened. As soon as I started talking about the old stuff, the old events, the, the sound went out. I, guys, I think I think I hit something. I think I, I knocked something up here. It was a little little loose it's not i'm not i don't think i'm being monitored well maybe i am but i don't think it was the uh, the control center the chernobyl the aluminum ducati control center in chernobyl or in, in the in the in the bowels of three mile island that said he's about to talk about the old bang stuff cut him off no i don't i don't think so i don't think so um michael i think was it michael that put forth uh, matt the reason you're allowed to exist I, I hope he meant like the channel exists not me walking the streets exist. We said, the reason you're allow- still allowed to exist, uh, Michael, I think, said, so I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident somewhere, somebody that has quite a degree of clout uh, that, you know, finds you am- amusing or just looks to you to see what people are noticing or something like that. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, they they allow you to still exist. I hope he meant on the platform, not the ability to walk down the street, but that would lead me to a, a sooner confrontation than what I was looking for, for um, the, what is it Bill said in the poster, Matt's afterlife mob forming in front of the white light. And Bill has updated the Matt's afterlife mob. We, Anubis now stands with a bicycle. Did you put the bicycle? Don't, Bill, if it's not there, don't worry about the bicycle chain. But somebody's probably wielding a bicycle chain. Uh, Madame Blavatsky, a- Anubis. I have to deal with it. Uh, Cernan, astronaut, astronaut Cernan stands in the light they're wait they're waiting for me um matt if you keep saying that you might you might manifest it on yourself i'm not i'm not worried about it i'm really i'm really not it's funny as heck though we're gonna imagine how many what are considered to be relatively formidable um beings or it will be bill will keep adding to the poster where maybe the poster will fill up with an entire army of those waiting for me and what would be called the lot the light in in the I don't know but it's 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 funny as shit, it's funny as shit. Um, Madam Levatsky, let's break bread. Let let me let me um, let's let's have a, a smoke a peace pipe together in the afterlife. You can explain to me why you wrote all this nonsense. I'm sorry, Theosophical Society. I've tried to read some of it. All of reality, as I stare at the magenta ref, magenta reflecting at me in the side of the Mac, as it usually does at this time of day. Um, all of reality is like a half page. What, what are these endless tomes of philosophical nonsense for? We could The whole rest of this channel could be nothing but reading the philosophers and all this nonsense that gets you nowhere. It's hard to understand to begin with. And even if you get it, it's like what, what, you end up the, coming out the other side trying to analyze what the sound of one hand clapping is. What does that get for you? What does that do for you moving into the moment of death? What does that... What it, how is that served reading the old philosophers and the endless tomes put out by the Theosophical Society? What does that do for the spiritual aspect of you that needs something from this life? 
Is that what the higher self didn't understand what the Theosophical Society understands? So the higher self had to send you some sort of plant, some sort of agent mat into this reality system to read the, the, the works, the complete works of Madame Blavatsky. So then the higher self could then through Matt could then understand what it itself, the greater all powerful Tony, Tony uh, did stress to me, he says, you can't imagine that aspect of you that you call higher self. You just can't, you can't fathom how it doesn't. Let me, he would say, Tony would say, it don't need, it don't need Matt to read the works of the Theosophical Society. The Theosophical, I don't even know, I don't know how to pronounce it let alone read it. Higher self don't, don't need that. Don't need to read nothing from this, from this reality. But um, as far, so I was saying that all the, all the old money has to do is just play croquet in the backyard. What happened behind us was clearly wrong, and um, they'd be worth trillions. But to my friend Tony and your, your friends and family, just, that's, just, that's, not, that's, a, that's just something that one of you people would come up with. It's a conspiracy. It's all... How is it mismanaged if they didn't have to do anything but sit on a savings account? Well, Matt, haven't you seen the first 20 minutes of the new series, The Gentleman, which I had to turn off, the stress level, and, you know, it just... I'm going to continue to watch The Gentleman because the, the movie with Matthew McConaughey uh, two or three years ago was very good. Very good uh, as a Guy Ritchie, like Snatch, I like that. I think all that Guy Ritchie stuff is much better than the Tarantino Pulp Fiction stuff, although it's along the same, the same vein. The the movie The Gentleman is very is very good. Snatch is very good. The new I'm going to give the new series a chance. Um, you know what else am I going to watch? I I like the movie too much, but it's just it's this high level stress for this this asshole. Oh, I'm not going to tell you that this this two sons are going to inherit this estate, old British money, and one's supposed to get it and doesn't get it, and he's then, of course, he's into the mob and he flies off the hand. It's just, I'm like, okay, you can see what's going to happen here. And um, I guess because they, the movie does a, G, the, 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 the series does a decent job painting the other brother as a relatively likable, decent person. Unlike Martin Scorsese did with any character in Killers of the Flower Moon. So you can understand that the pickle that this guy's going to get into. Anyway, let me stop, guys. And, you know, I don't even know if that was... Hopefully the microphone picked that up. There's other things to talk about. I forgot to mention it earlier, but the Magenta presentation in the Oscars, well, what do you think I'm going to say? It was, it, was, it was as much as it could be without, you know, it just being painted magenta all over the place, which even the dummy on the street with them would start to say, what's this all about? I mean, it was, they used as much as they could uh, in a relatively subtle way. I mean, for the magenta to keep coming, though, every third or fourth segment in a big way, it was just enough where we'd be one of those people for bringing it up, of course. I did mention it. I, I wanted to hear what my mother had to say. I said, do you, have you seen a lot of magenta recently, or do you notice the magenta all over the place? And, and it was, of course, I made the mistake of bringing it up during a Barbie segment. And it was, they, no, Matt, that's, this is Barbie. Of course, it's Barbie pink. It was pure magenta. There's a total difference between pink and magenta. And I said, and I, you know, I, I, I made, I, th I thought that, that was a mistake. Of course, she's going to associate it with Barbie, and I'm just one of those people. But it was, it was very prominent, no doubt about it. Um, you know, I don't know. It was, it was almost like there was a reason. The one time I brought it up, and I almost caught myself. Okay, yeah. That, and then she said the Barbie segment. I went, oh, of course, that, that explains everything, right? This Matt, this Barbie is the dominant movie in this Oscars. She didn't say this, but this was kind of like the theme back. Of course, it's Barbie Pink is going to be everywhere. It's not, it's magenta. <laughs> Whatever. Matt, you just give up. They're not going to, yeah. I just wanted to see what she would say. I unsubscribed from the Critical Drinker movie reviewer, I don't know, a month or two ago for various reasons. The main reason is there's a constant reference to poop, like in every single video, multiple whether it be the picture of a bowl or something really disgusting or, or certain terminology, it just came up too much. It almost comes up so much it was like, I don't know what is what that's all about, but I actually made a few comments underneath. Please stop referring to poop. Anyway, but a recent, his take on the Oscars uh, is a recent video I saw. It, it came up in my feed, even though I had unsubscribed. And I agree uh, with his take. 
and it's not the greatest video, so I'll just summarize it for you here. He basically says uh, they toned it down. Almost, he almost put forth like they're embarrassed in a way, or they see how everybody's starting to reject woke, and we're going to see the reasons for this differently, of course, but his overall take, I agree with. They did uh, tone it down. Even though I haven't seen the last 10 Oscars, you know, like last year was the slap, the Chris Rock and Will Smith slap, or people talk, or people will send me things, and they and I watched this entire Oscars, like I said, because I had to. My mother uh, and stepfather didn't get uh, electricity restored till around 11 o'clock. And for some weird reason, it, it ended early. The Oscars ended at 10.30, which is just unheard of. They did tone it down. Uh, meaning, you know, I have seen this show how many times going back to 19, you know, 85 or something, we started watching it, where the actor or actress, they get the Oscar or win the award, and they they immediately start talking about politics or recently Trump or... The, or cl- Ooh, I almost said it. Primate, ooh, monkey, primate change or global charming. They push that or they push this. It was very, there wasn't much of that. It's almost like they got a sense, and I don't think each actor or actress was given a, a little little pep talk beforehand. I think they all just kind of sensed that um, this woke stuff, people are little getting a little tired of it. They're getting a little perturbed of it all the time. They know their, their audience numbers are way down. Like I said, I would have never watched a minute of it. But they, they kept it to an absolute minimum. And that's what the critical drinker noticed, and, and no, no doubt about it. Um, there were a few things, because they just can't, they just can't, that, that, that ilk, that litter, <laughs> just can't help themselves. But um, from that respect, it was almost palatable. And, and I, you expect a lot of that in the monologue. I mean, how much of the monologue, from the, whether it be Chris Rock or whatever, I mean, it's just, kind of, oh, that was the bashing of the snowman, of course. Last year, was it Chris Rock last year? Was it, the slap seems years ago. I don't know, I guess it was just last year. It was the bashing of the snowman. And of course, all the snowmen people in the front row, they have to laugh. Oh, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're really bad. Give us some more, Chris. Give us some more. Give us some more. We're, we're so bad. We want to make up for it over the next hundred years. Oh, but, but will you pay money to make? Oh, I'm not giving you not my money. Don't take my money. Anyway, um, so you expect all this political stuff in the, but the, the big part of the truth community latched onto the whatever Ricky Gervais said. Uh, was it the Golden Globes? Like, like, I mean, how how fooled is still a big segment of the truth community? Like Ricky Gervais, I, I, I guess I watched a few minutes of it. Like he's working for you. Like what he said wasn't exactly what the Not Milk Wanted said. Uh, well, Matt, what he said wasn't flattering to them. Well, to create camps. I mean, we know that. That to always push, bring in the other side when appropriate to create opposing camps, which creates friction, which it feeds from. It didn't want 100% of people to rent the Carl Weathers movie, Action Jacksonation. It didn't want 100% people to rent that movie. It wanted 15 to 20% to say no. So the camps are created. So family groups fight with each other. So husbands and wives divorce. That's what it wants, of course. So, um, you know, it was it was toned down. Um, but re- re- one last thing about the Jimmy Kimmel opening monologue um, and I thought, here, you'll probably agree with me, because this did come to me as soon as he said it. He, he's doing, you know, it, it's, it's po- from a political standpoint, it's very low-key, as a critical drinker said. And I thought, was he gonna, are they going to just b- completely um, gloss over that there was a strike, like pretend it didn't happen? Well, no, we, you, there's no way, because the, st- the strike, whether it be the writer's strike or the actor's strike, is part of the Not Nelk script. It's not like something they didn't see coming. It's all part of a script laid down many years in advance. I know Pootie Tang Award, but you know there's all different types here, guys. We, I might don't don't Pootie Tang Award me. I have to talk sometimes to the newbie. Um, so, he, so no, he can't gloss over it or pretend it didn't happen because they want to remind people it happened. It's all part of the script. So the last part of his monologue, whatever he starts, five minutes of the show is about the strike. And we really it was impressive how we came together and oh, this touchy feely crap and and then uh, it was very exclusive. Then was he going to uh, just make this about the actors or what about other? And he started to include more groups. He said, "Well, I want to. We we can't forget all those behind the scenes." And I thought for a second, is this where they're finally going to thank the fans? The, one of the main points of this segment, guys, is I don't think they've ever. 
thank the fans. Now, have I watched every minute of the Oscars? No, but I would... I, let me just get this out, and, and you'll see where I'm going. I'm sorry to be all over the place. We want to thank those that put the stages together, and they said the Teamsters, and those that drive the trucks, and those unions behind the stage that were, behind the, that were all with us, and all these, all these, oh, thanking all the little people, isn't that? The, but mostly about unions. And I thought, okay, well, this would be the time, I thought, to thank the fans for uh, putting up with it for, to a degree. or And then I thought, no, they won't. It's they're too highbrow. They're too elite, too exclusive. The, the academy. What is the academy? I want to talk about that. Um, they won't thank thank the fans. They didn't. And then I thought, have they ever thanked the fans? Have they ever? Has has anybody uh, that's that, that maybe some of the actors or actresses? I'd like to thank you know Sally Field or Fields or whatever her name is now. Mandela Effect confusion. I don't. So, I want to thank all my fans. Okay, that I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about. A segment produced by the Oscars and the Academy itself. Have they ever truly thanked the people that pay the money? I don't know. I don't think so. And, of course, Jimmy Kimmel didn't say a word about, you know, thank you for putting up with us or anything to thank you for, for the, to the fans for coming back to the theaters for Barbie and or, what, or whatever. That maybe was still during the strike. Not a word. It's always like it's... It's in a way, it is a mockery to almost not ever thank the fans. Like they're just up here on Mount Olympus, and the people should be grateful. They should be grateful that we put this this thing out that you can watch <laughs> called the Oscars. I mean, it, it's just unbelievable. The and then the Academy. You know, it's always like. And I hadn't. I remember this from years back watching the Oscars. But um, even the biggest of actors, they're fearful of something. Like it's. Well, I'd like, oh, I, and somebody said, oh, I forgot to thank the Academy. Do I still have time? And they come, I thank, thank you, Academy. Thank you. I was like, what is this Academy? It's like that famous fake Woodrow Wilson quote. The Woodrow Wilson quote, of course, um, there's something in this world that's so powerful, so all-invasive, so uh, all-encompassing. I, I don't, you know what I'm talking, I don't, I don't know it offhand. So... Um, involved and, and manipulative that even when the most powerful people in business and industry complain about it or talk about it, they do it with a whisper. Something so, it proves basically, you could take it and say, this proves the conspiracy we're talking about. Well, if Woodrow Wilson really said that, the not milk would not allow the quote to make its rounds. It's all part of the plan, of course. He probably never said it. it is attributed to Woodrow Wilson. It's kind of like they have to show you that there is this powerful force here that is behind the scenes and you could say to your uncle, look, even you, you, you call me conspiracy person, but Woodrow Wilson says there's some power here that even when the most powerful people in industry and business complain about it or talk about it, they do it, they do it with a whisper. They're, they're even afraid of it. It proves that, you know, I, I, why the Not Milk does this, it's, you know, it's evil genius. But whatever that power in the Woodrow Wilson fake quote, uh, that's kind of what the Academy is. But for real, potentially, for real. Because um, everybody, oh, what is this academy? Who is the academy? It's like the way the Matrix 4 presented the suits. Well, you're the architect or you're the analyst and you're the highest level programs managing the entire Matrix. But then an allusion to a greater power in Matrix 4 was called the suits. Well, who are the suits, right? And who is this academy? And um, even though the supposed academy president uh, came out and said something, Later, it was like, was it Billie Eilish? Or they they went around a tunnel and the Academy president after, uh, it's it's a woman who seems to be in her 50s or so. I had never seen her before. I don't know who she is. She's walking back through the tunnel and, and Billie Eilish and some of the other presenters or, or um, those that gave her performance came through the same tunnel, almost like they weren't supposed to when she was, oh, and they were like apologizing or like, like, like in other words... Even, the, you know, the, whatever the academy is, is part of the creepy table, the real power structure of this world that, you know, can make phone, that doesn't maybe need passports to fly into countries, doesn't need to go through customs, doesn't need money, you know, whatever, whatever we, we talk about, we like to, you know, make fun and talk about what are the, what is, how does this creepy table and, and those that really pull the strings here, um, it's, it's, and I'm, and I'm sorry for the sidebar guys, but it's not um, empowering them to talk about. I mean, obviously, um, you know, the, first of all, we gave the affirmation. We don't give power or energy to anything that we talk about. But there is there's some powerful things here that pull strings on pro sports, 
on what movies are made, on what, politi what politics is, what presidents will win, quote, win. Uh, obviously, there's a power structure here. I don't, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with talking about it. It exists. We don't give it our energy. It takes enough energy from the, from the masses and your brothers and sisters and cousins and everybody around us that believes in it. So, but I was like, who is this? You could see the actors, even, even the, it's very similar to the Woodrow Wilson quote, even the, the highest or most respected and, and richest in business and in, business, in business and industry, they, they whisper about it when they complain. Or you, even Steven Spielberg or, or the top people, um, they won't ever, you know, they're not bigger than this academy. You can tell there's some power structure that they're almost afraid of or, or they are afraid of. And um, if the academy is listening to the words coming out of my mouth, I would like to say, why did you have to use the dick of Osiris? I mean, you know, and if you are going to use the dick of Osiris, bot, the, the, everybody knows bot that the Oscar is the, is the phallus of Osiris. I mean, that should be, should be common knowledge of this poem. No, if you go online to Wikipedia, it's somebody's Uncle Oscar, somebody that worked for the Academy, if anybody knew he's here. Uh, in the 40s, there was some clerk that worked for the Academy, and the award looked like her Uncle Oscar. Yeah, yeah, right. And that's, yeah, I mean, they always, whenever the, whenever the official story is that dumbed down, you know the real meaning is really hardcore occult, uh, you know, uh, esoteric occult hardcore pipe hit and shit horse shit you know i mean so the if the story is really dumb and stupid then the meaning is really really occult importance to them it's almost like it has to this the snapback of the rubber band has to work that way somebody's uncle oscar oh yeah i mean who could be so dumb and and i was telling my stepfather that remember it's like they say it's he would he doesn't want to ever in front of my mother say oh your conspiracy's right matt he don't, he'll never go there especially when my mother's in the room but he could see that this is ridiculous whatever the whatever the official story is just looking at the headlines at cnn.com i mentioned a few times i need to do this first guys especially when I make a video about the oscars i have to make sure there's not something major going on in the world nothing nothing major's going on chicago still exists if this is the number one story, according to CNN.com, things are pretty good in the world. If this is the number one story, they're not, per their creepy-ass astrology, they're not ready to roll out their next menu item or whatever they're going to plop in our lap next, those creeps. It says here, the UK says new laser system can down a target the size of a coin for only $13 a shot. What does the price have to do with, with anything? So if it was $15 a shot, they're going to scrap the whole program. If it was $4,000 a scrap, a shot, the European Central Bank or, or the Bank of London can't print up whatever it wants on a supercomputer, whatever. $13 a shot, a super laser system can down a target the size of a coin. It's called the Dragon Fire under the Dragon's Wing laser system. A can down a missile or an aircraft defense drone. And they've repeated at the bottom, thirteen dollars a shot. Uh, is the Matt is the thirteen here on purpose? Of course it is. Why they reality itself, the dark reality needs to push these numbers. It's part of the spell. I don't want to know. We just it's just it's so their gematria, the way they use it, is so ridiculous. It's so obvious at this point. Uh, per the Chat GPT recording me in real time before upload. If you can get a word to. Uh, the, the you know the 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 not milk bots. I mean, just this gematria. I mean, you didn't hide it a little bit better or something. It's the the way you use it. Is what's the what's the message coming back to me? Is we know you guys can see it. We don't care if your little ilk can see it. It's used to manipulate the masses in some way. Okay, again, it don't care about us no more. It don't. We we it, it was the, this little group over here. They're going to see most everything we do. Let them see it. Because they've belittled us. We are the boy that cried wolf, in, in this case, cried conspiracy. Nobody believes us. We have been ever, forever, and eternally marginalized. And it has done a masterful job marginalizing us. The one time we really have some, something to warn about or something that really needs to be said, nobody will believe us. That is the job it has done to us in this quote, as an old man would say, new century. So the, when I see a headline like this, the first thing I think is it always goes back to submarines. I need to make a video about submarines 
and how, I mean, everybody should be able to see through this, guys. Your neighbor, my friend Tony, your best friend, at a billion five to two billion dollars each now, putting these gigantic, what are they, 300,000 tons nuclear vessel, vessel, submarines in the water, where you could almost say a, a, sci- a kids at a science fair with the technology that exists today could rig up something to go through the water really, 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 really fast and hit the side of the submarine, which it's, you know, Hunt for Red October countermeasures this big square with all these bubbles shoots out the side. I mean, they would, they have, I guarantee somewhere they have little drones that go through the water the size of uh, pencils uh, that move at 100 miles an hour that could find a gigantic beached whale of a submarine in 20 seconds. I mean, the fact that it, they need to keep the money moving, guys. They need to keep the whole society and economy moving. They need to keep people employed. At least that's the phase now before they go to the the basic wage where you just put your headset on and become a zombie. That's the next phase, I guess. That's the ready player one phase. But for now, they need to keep the money multiplier going. And there is, if there is 400 uh, major companies that are in some way uh, building submarines or subcontractors or government contractors that provide the widget or even the you know the people that provide the contracts to go up and go in and clean it up or paint it. I mean, it, it's, it needs to keep thousands of different groups moving in millions of different or millions of different groups moving in thousands of different ways. So they will, they will build submarines um, as long as as they can. And somehow people will believe that this is a legitimate defense system. When kids at a science fair, I believe there are kids at a science fair that literally could rig something up to get something the size of a pencil. If they could get access to, I don't know what I could say here, but you know, there there would be something that you would need to put in the pencil. (laughs) There's nothing that could stop it. These, if the drones can, the drones can move through the air Go watch a drone, um, a drone race. There's drone races where people race these drones. Each drone has a camera through these little obstacles, and the drones are moving around at incredible speeds. It can stop on a dime, and I know it's through the air, but they, of course they have something similar through the water that would no submarine would have a countermeasure against. Um, people, I mean, we should be ashamed of ourselves. I made the video five years ago or so saying the submarines... I mean, there's, there's, it's obvious there's no use for them. There hasn't been a use probably since the 1950s, where I should have I should have realized that 20 years ago. We all should have. But um, anyway, so why can't this laser shoot into the water and get the submarine? Anyway, whatever, guys. Is that is that it? Um, how long is the video? Getting pretty long. Let me. T- I'll take a look at these um, real quick. I'll scan the headlines, see if there's anything else. Guys, one last thing. Um, not too long ago, I said every single time I look at the CNN headlines, they appear dumber or more dumbed down than they were the last time I looked. You can almost see a change month to month in how dumb the headlines are getting. And this is no exception, I guess. Well, I put that out a few months ago. Why would it be exception? But here's, here's an example, okay? This is a headline on the front page of CNN Dot com, which to those overseas is our, like our BBC. See farm dogs daily struggle to wake up and go to work. Not, this has got to be a joke, right, Matt? No. See farm dogs daily struggle to wake up. <laughs> we all struggle <laughs> to wake up <laughs> and go to work. Okay, Matt, you got to click it. A hard to wake up groggy doggy wins the internet by needing his beauty sleep. <laughs> CNN, they didn't even pick it up from the AP or anything. It's CNN's, oh, I forgot to, to talk about the naked John Cena. John Cena comes out during the Oscars naked with just a little who won the whatever award um, covering his, I mean, maybe he had a sock over. You could, he looked naked. Uh, he, for some reason, John Cena, they've been putting him through a large amount of humiliation rituals uh, for some reason. John, what did you do? Dude, I mean, that's not, he's been in a dress several times. He's a singer on a Verizon commercial. I mean, I thought they hit these people with one or two or three uh, humiliation rituals. It's endless for this guy, John Cena. He's probably, at some point, 
I don't think I should speculate off free voice what I was going to say. Why he's having to pay the piper this way instead of the other way is kind of where I was going. Maybe he's a decent guy and he's he chose this as the lesser of two weevils. If you see what I'm what I'm saying, the homepage just cleared and reset a few few more things. SpaceX's Starship, the world's most powerful rocket, makes it further into test flight than ever before. I'm going to take a look at this actually after this video is over. All SpaceX does is test, test, and and the people just accept it. Endless tests it makes it further than ever before. Well, how f- they they told us in 1969 the Saturn rocket. Go watch the Tom Hanks movie. The Saturn rocket went to the moon, right? So now they're testing and it's just making it out a little ways, but they could do better in 1960. Now the point is, how do the people around us buy this? All SpaceX does is test. Te- nothing ever happens. Nothing's ever accomplished. And then just to make it look good, they blow one up on the pad <laughs> once a year. The people around us, there's something wrong with them. I, I, you know, I We know, Matt, but how can they? It's stalled century. They just keep stalling the same themes out over and over. Nothing ever happens. There's no improvements to people's lives. It's just people are accepting of it. It's unbelievable. Okay. The main headline switch to, it's the, this is stalled century to a degree. Trump attends key hearing case in his Mar-a-Lago docs case. I mean, how many times have we heard about, are you totally sick and tired of hearing about this Mar-a-Lago estate or whatever? I mean, come on. He post- supposedly took documents. I don't even know. Like, was Trump allowed to keep any classified documents he wanted? That's at the center of a pivotal hearing on the future of his Florida criminal case. Guys, I'm still sticking to my same prediction. Um, I predict Trump, um, if it's Biden, if they put up Biden, and it's not a last-minute uh, Michael replacement or something like that, if it, if it is Biden, they're not going to go with another. They will put Trump back in as part of the script. And they definitely, they, this criminal, uh, I don't know, when I, I was saying before, I was kind of joking, guys, that he'll do the first six months behind bars instead of from the Oval Office, he'll do six months. It'll be a constitutional crisis because he will be behind bars, yet the president of the United States. I'm, I'm keeping it on the table. If I had to put money on a, on a certain number like a roulette, roulette, a roulette wheel, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't think that's prim, you know, the primary um, uh, thing that's going to happen. All right, but they're going to play this constitutional crisis bit or the charges against him when he's about to become president. I think there's just too much here. They will play this up right to the inauguration. And I, he could end up, I mean, in, in another type of constitutional crisis, uh, they, he could end up pardoning himself, which would just piss off everybody on the left, everybody over here that believes it's all real. He'll he'll. What, what was it? Is Rodney Dangerfield in Back to School when he donated the Thornton Mellon School of Business? Puts the shovel in the ground in, in the ceremonial dirt, uh, lose like a sleep in the front row. And he says, I dedicate this building to myself. And he throws the dirt all over. Was it wasn't Professor Turgeston, whatever the, whatever the uh, business teacher that talked about widgets. What's a widget? It doesn't matter. It's a fictional product. Tell that to the bank. He throws the dirt on him, um, that's basically uh, what's going to happen here. He'll go up to the he'll go up to the podium, and look it, it, again. I don't, I'm not going to put my chips here either. But you could just, he'll say first thing I'm doing. I, I've been inaugurated. I've sworn on this satanic Bible or whatever they put their hands on. He says I'm now I now pardon like Rodney Dangerfield. I dedicate this building to myself. I pardon myself, and the left will go nuts if he maneuvers to get rid of all his. See what happens here, guys. See, see what happens. Either way, Matt, what, what are we going to do after the half page? This, there's, it will, if you, if you just want to, guys, at some point, if this channel, we have the half page, we understand how this reality works. Um, if it just resorts to making fun of it, I think there's, a, there's enough where many of you will still want to be with me here. Uh, subscribers will go down, but we'll still be around. Matt will still be around just to make fun of it, if that if it does come to that, um, because somebody needs to do it, and I'm, um, I'm willing to do it. <laughs> so it's fun to do. All right, guys, thanks a lot. I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow.